This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 582 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is brought to you by equestriancollections.com for a world of choices in equestrian shopping. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is from Reese Kofler Stanfield, international dressage competitor. Reese is a young and upcoming star in dressage here in the U.S. and a popular coach and clinician. Her students are dressage enthusiasts as well as event riders who are out to improve their dressage scores and their overall performances. Today's tip: walk is making your horses walk bigger and better. But first, a word about today's sponsor, EquestrianCollections.com. When you need to resupply, replace, update, or invest in the stuff that makes your horse life possible, stop by EquestrianCollections.com first. Browse through some 7,000 boot choices from great brands like Ariat, Boggs, Mountain Horse, Ovation, Smoky Mountain, and more. Outfit yourself in the latest and the greatest. And don't forget your horse. EquestrianCollections.com offers some 400 blankets, sheets, and coolers from Buckus, Amigo, and Rambo by Horseware, Hug, Kensington, Triple Crown Custom, and Weatherbeta, just to name a few. Your horse will be warm and dry and stylish this winter. Not sure what type of saddle pad you want? Well, go to Equestrian Collections because they have over 600 different choices. No matter whether you ride English, Western, or bareback around the backyard, EquestrianCollections.com has the most amazing selection of brand name products you are going to find anywhere. So stop by today, EquestrianCollections.com. Now, enjoy today's tip. And Reese Kofler Stanfield is here with us again, the leader of Maplecrest Farm in Lexington, <laughs> Kentucky, fearless leader, and um, the lunging Nazi. <laughs> yes, we discovered that's my new, in a previous that's my new tip. term. Yeah, lunging Nazi. Uh, <laughs> it looks like today you're going to be the get your horse to walk better guru. Well, we're going to try. <laughs> okay, it's going to be tough, isn't it? This is a really tough subject. Um, this is this comes up a lot uh, because for us in dressage world, the walk is a double score. So it's it's actually can why really why did up. they make a gate that's so difficult to train the double score? Well, because you only you do yeah exactly you only do it one time you know in the trot you do you trot left you trot right and in the walk you typically you walk your diagonal you have a piece for your extended walk and then a piece for your collected walk and uh, you can lose a lot of points in the walk. So um, you know or if you're like me and, and trail ride a lot. You spend a lot of time walking. So exactly. if your horse has a sucky walk, your butt hurts. Yeah, your, your tissue hurts. And we don't want that, you know. So th- there's a couple things with the walk. Um, number one, a lot of times horses are behind your leg aids. Okay, so for those of us who are not in the dressage world. Um, you kick and nothing happens. Got it. Yep. <laughs> and and we all have been there. Right? We've been there. My event horses go there. I mean, it's really obnoxious when you kick your horse and nothing happens. And they almost walk slower. Ooh, yeah, that's yeah. not fun. Or you feel like they're almost going backwards and they're supposed to be going forwards. Yeah, that's and... what happens when you walk away from the barn. Exactly. Yeah, we always say walk to the feed tub. If you put your feed tub gotcha. out, the other thing we say is like a cat on the catwalk. And so we gotcha. sing that sometimes at the farm on yeah. the catwalk. Um, that big, you know, if you think of a cat moving and walking, they sort of, everything moves in their body. Mm-hmm. A lot of times on horses, they just walk sometimes really stiff. Yeah. Or... They're really uh, – in, in a lot of times you put your leg on to ask your horse to walk and nothing happens. So we, what do you end up doing? You kick again and nothing happens. And you kick and kick and kick and finally you get a response. Your horse trots. Yeah. They trot or they <laughs> jig or something. But it's not that they walk forward. Initially, if my horse were to trot, to trot, to trot or to jig, if I'm asking him to go forward, I would be okay with that. And it's this something. It's something. But you need to refine those leg aids. You know, um, when you put your leg on, there should be a forward response. Unless, of course, you're asking your horse to back up. But in this case, when you put your leg on, you need to know that that horse is going to move forward. 
And a lot of times in the walk, uh, especially if you're walking away from the barn, the horse is like, oh, no, thank you. I would walk, rather walk behind, your, behind you. Mm-hmm. I would tap the horse with a little stick or I would use my leg and get the horse's attention and say, hey, come on now. I have asked you a question and I need some form of an answer. So first and foremost, 101 is the horse has to respect an appropriate aid. I love that word, respect. So mm-hmm. if you say walk on, if, right. whether you're a dressage rider or a trail rider or do ranch work, yep. Um, when you say move on at the walk, the horse should first and for- foremost move on. Now right. maybe he's not very good at it yet sure. and he accidentally trots. Fine. But it's like, okay, you get a B plus. Right. Okay, exactly. first and foremost, and step s- one. And so step one, I, and so if my horse were to trot in that case, I certainly wouldn't punish them. I wouldn't stop them and yank them in the mouth or anything. I would say, okay, I would say, okay, let's ask again. And I would re-ask the question in that case. If the horse is trotted, I would gently bring the horse back to the walk. You got a response. wasn't exactly the, the response that you're looking for, but it was a response. So, so the set, next time, yep. Suzette and Thunder are walking along. Yes. Um, Suzette gets thoroughly frustrated, and she just hauls off and wails him in the rib cage. He kicks him. And Thunder goes, oh, my God. And he jigs into a little trot. Yep. She politely brings him back to the walk yep. because at least he's paying attention yes. now, right? He, yeah, you got his attention. Thunder's so, awake. Thunder's awake now. So Suzette, again, now Thunder's plodding away mm-hmm. from the barn. Mm-hmm. And Suzette says, walk on. Right. Um, should Suzette, this time, she shouldn't start with slam him in the rib cage. She should exactly. start with something smaller. With, yes? We would say the light aid. We would say the aid that we want the horse to respond to. So you start small. so very light aid. So so after we have woken Thunder, he is awoken. Uh, we put it, our leg on uh, and say Thunder walk on, and with a gentle leg aid. If he doesn't listen to the gentle leg aid, he gets another kick and another wake up kick. Got Hello, it. I I just now gave you, so it's a correcting aid. Got it. So I would do that. So that's that's a big one for getting him to walk on. So first we have to teach Thunder to consistently respect the aid that says move on yes and it's got to be an aid that is respectful for his needs obviously if you use your leg and your hands lay up in the air it's not fair right or you hit them in the mouth right a lot of people do that they'll they'll you'll be working on this and they don't keep their core tight um the horse moves forward and they're not ready which is in my they will get yelled at at my farm because that's not fair you're so mean i know i know i just don't like my horses hit in the mouth jeez but if they were to fall back in that case, I would say, hey, come on. That's not fair. You have now asked your horse a question and just lied to them because you said, nope, don't go forward because with your body you fell backwards. Got so it. be ready. Maybe sit a little bit forward because yeah. that's what we need to do. Yeah. If, you, if you're a neck strap person, put, hold on the neck put strap. A, put a pinky finger in there. Yeah, absolutely. So you have to be ready for the response. Mm-hmm. You can't just be wail him in the rib cage and, and then expect him to move on if you promptly give him a... Um, conflicting aid that says that sucked. I'm not doing that again. Exactly, okay. and so that, so that that'll work against you. So you have to be careful. So once we've we conquered that, that yeah. mm-hmm. what's the next step? So the next step, I would say, you know, depending on where you are, um, with quality, a lot of horses. I I have a couple horses that like to their thoroughbreds, and they sort of bounce in the walk. They're like bouncy balls. Mm-hmm. Um, how do we fix that? We do a lot of transitions. Again, if that horse is starting to bounce. We do a transition to halt because they're starting to come off the aids. Mm-hmm. So we go ahead and do a transition to halt. Mm-hmm. And then we walk forward another few steps and he starts the bouncing. We bring him back to halt again. Mm-hmm. And in that halt transition, uh, what I'm looking for is the, the ability to be able to ride a half halt. Mm-hmm. Slow his body down. Right. Slow his body down. The halt is obviously the full, the full on stop. Mm-hmm. But then I'll go walk, walk, walk. I'll almost do a halt which is a half of a halt. That's kind of like push the clutch in. Exactly. Don't change yeah. gears. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's a great way to say it. I want the horse to come back to me a little bit and then walk forward again. So I'm teaching them that when I give a half halt or give an aid to bring them back, mm-hmm. uh, I want to, again, a response. Just mm-hmm. like I did, like we were talking about with the forward leg response. Got it. I want the slow down response. So, so we're going to teach the horse to move forward from your aids. Correct. Press the gas pedal. Right. We're going to teach him to um, slow down or mm-hmm. rebalance from your age, pushing right. in the clutch. Right, exactly. Because that disengages the transmission. It's not He's not going to be going forward right. with vigor because the transmission is pushing those tires. Right. 
but he's also not putting on the brakes. Exactly. It is different. So anybody yeah. out there who's driven an automobile with a <laughs> standard transmission, yeah. that's the feeling really that right. you have yeah. when you do a, yeah. a ha- what we call a half halt in the English business. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty sure you call it a half halt in the Western, Western business too. Um, that's really the feeling you have yeah. because the horse simply disengages his transmission for a second. Yep. Rebalance his body a little bit. Right. And then says, okay, what's next? Yeah, waits for the next... Waits for the next step. Yeah, so exactly. when you have the quickie, jiggy, bounce up and down mm-hmm. walk, mm-hmm. and you say, Wait. move forward off my oh, aid, and he yep. goes, bouncy, 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 bouncy. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Push the clutch in. Right. We're staying at a walk. Wait. That right. gives him the ability to stay in his walk. Right. Rather exactly. than just stopping. Yep. Got you it. You got it. Okay, so you got it. mastered... Putting the clutch in and getting yes. a half halt. Yes. <laughs> That's a good way to describe it. Got it. What's next? <laughs> well, I think, again, you have to... We're fast-forwarding through know, the whole process. process. This takes, it, it, it takes years to get this Walks far. are the toughest. And I will tell you, on uh, my wonderful Grand Prix horse, Casper, that was I worked the most on the extended walk. Because mm-hmm. it was a double score. Yeah. And extended walks are not something that come naturally to many horses. No. And he wanted to just be too tight in his frame. So I would start with the extended walk. I would ride a halt. Uh, in his case, and make him stand with his neck in the extended walk frame, which was that's not easy. No, either. that's really. I mean, this is a this was a because an extended walk frame, he's going to have his head and neck stretched and telescoped out. That's, that's right. not an easy spot to stand. No, he had to stay. <laughs> that's like standing on one foot with, your, with one finger <laughs> yeah. on your nose and and one on your belly button. <laughs> right, right. Now that's that was a very advanced horse, but I mean that was a very difficult thing for him to do, and I practiced that. As much as I did Piaf and Passage. Mm -hmm. I mean, because honestly, the walk in some cases are worth more than those Piaf and Passage, uh, you know, scores are. Mm -hmm. And the Grand Prix, it just depends on. The extend walk's a double score. And you can lose a lot of points in the walk. Hmm. So so he would have to stop and stand in that frame. And then I would walk on. And then I would do some circles in that extended frame. Mm -hmm. Again, Te- you know, teaching him, hey, you have to stay with a longer telescoping neck. That's mm-hmm. a great way to say that. And um, then I would make him do that on a 10-meter circle to the right and then a 10-meter circle to the left. Uh, again, I don't want him moving his neck in his frame. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the next step that you can work in the walk. A so lot of bending lines. A lot of, so going in a relaxed, mm-hmm. comfortable fashion yep. that your horse is designed for. Yep. And you say... Walk on with a little enthusiasm, yep. and he does. Yep. And now you're going to start to switch it up by asking him to do turns and mm-hmm. shapes doing yes. that. Doing that, right. But when he gets quick, then you go back to your half halt and say, uh-uh. Right. Yeah, wait. Wait for me. And quick is when you feel the horse starting to change from one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two. He gets kind of bouncy like he's got springs in his yeah. feet. <laughs> yep. And he's leaning towards the one, two of a trot. Right. That's exactly. You're going you to feel that, ch- that change in his rhythm and the mm-hmm. change in the feel on his back. Yeah. Um, and that's not a good thing. And that's not what you're looking for. <laughs> no, not in this case. Got it. Not in this case. So once, you, once you've got turning. Yep. Then, <laughs> then you have to master changing the frame in the dressage. You know, you need to be able to go from the longer frame, the extended. Oh, this is going to be transition walk. within the gate again. Within the <gasps> gate. See how these I tips relate know. to each other. They do. It's you know, that's a nice that's a good thing about training a horse in dressage or with the principles of dressage in mind. Every horse should be able to handle the principles. Mm-hmm. And they are different changes. Um I mean it's it's a it's a theoretical change. Mm-hmm. kind of system mm-hmm. so once you sort of understand what's going on then you're like oh they have to do it in all the gates and they have to mm-hmm. you know go up the training scale and, and that kind of thing so yes my next step in the walk would be uh your transition from the longer frame to the shorter frame mm-hmm. and then shorter to longer frame you should be able to do all of that so for the walk specifically you've got a good quality Mother Nature gave me walk, mm-hmm. a medium walk, mm-hmm. and it works really well. Yeah. Yay. It's I know. Yes. Quality. Um, is it, and you're just getting to that phase where you can start changing it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you start that process, do you the, do the changes more often or less often? And do you increase the frequency or decrease the frequency as the horse gets better at it? Well, it, that, that it's a tough one because it depends Everything on the horse. About this whole walk I, thing is tough. It, it is. It's, it's a very walk hard. For I know. Sake. I know. And and the other thing about walk, I will tell everyone, everyone does it when you're working your horse and you go to walk. What do you do? 
<sighs> yeah, everyone goes to sleep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so unfortunately, when you go to sleep, you're training your horse to sort of go to sleep in the walk. Yeah. So you have to be very cautious that when you are riding, walk isn't always break time. Right. Yeah. Actually, my horses walk on the bit and round it while we're working, and at the very end, that's when we drop the reins completely. Mm-hmm. But I don't, that, I don't drop the reins completely until I'm done mm-hmm. with war with work because mm-hmm. it's too confusing for them. You know, right. they don't understand that. You know, because work because that walk is really part very much part of their work versus Absolutely. most horses don't do much walking in their competitive life. Right. Right, right exactly. But dressage and event horses do have to walk. Yes. So for us I'm very specific on that. And you can get a horse really tired in the walk. Mm-hmm. If you do a lot of these shortening and lengthening transitions and a mm-hmm. lot of these bending lines, you can make them sweat in the walk actually. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very, very normal. I think of it as weight lifting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And discipline. Them. Yeah. I and mean, there's a lot of discipline aspects to this as well. So, yeah. um, so again, the frequency that you do it depends on the stage and the level of the horse. Sometimes, if you're a really fit horse, um, sometimes doing a lot of it doesn't help you. Hmm. Yeah, they just get more tense and get more get ah. tighter. So sometimes it's good to do a couple times and then go do something, else, do something else and come back. So and- if your horse starts to resent. Mm-hmm. Doing the transition mm-hmm. within the gate at the mm-hmm. walk, mm-hmm. Um, that is an indicator that you're doing too much. Yeah, probably doing too much. So you may want to back off the number of repetitions. So the number of repetitions and how, for example, if you were doing the same exercise at a trot, mm-hmm. um, forward trot, short and trot, forward trot, short and trot, mm-hmm. you might do 10 strides pushing the trot on mm-hmm. and then five bringing it back, 10... Is that a similar rhythm that you would use at the walk, or is it further apart? I think it's further apart. Further apart? Uh, yeah. I mean, again, uh, you know, the, my Grand Prix could probably handle that. He could have handled but that's, the short. that's much too close together for it's, a more green Absolutely. It's, less it's, competitive it's too much. And, and I think you also have to watch the rhythm of the walk. This is another big kind of red flag. It's a four-beat rhythm. One, two, three, four. And it should stay that way. If you try, it shouldn't sound like the samba. No, no. Unless I think Pasifinos do some sort of. Yeah, they do that tap dance thing. Yeah, it's very cool, but I don't understand it, so I'm not. I can't (laughs) can't explain it on the tip. They're Um, they're looking for a very different quality of walk. Exactly. So if you're not doing that, if you're doing this, um, you always want to watch the rhythm. So sometimes if you try to collect a horse or bring them back too much, then you actually get a problem with the rhythm. You have a one, two, then a pause, and then a three, four kind of thing? Uh, yeah, it can become pacey, and that's not a good thing. You no, know, when, no, 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 that is not, you do not want tension in the walk because it is very difficult to fix it. Once they have it, it's hard to fix. Hard to fix. Yeah, it's very, very hard. So to fix. when you get to that point where mm-hmm. you're starting to change within the walk, yes, forward, forward longer walk, shorter walk, longer mm-hmm. walk. Be very cognizant of your rhythm. Yes. One, two, three, four. Yes. With an even beat. Right. And tension, bad. Bad, bad. bad, so, bad sometimes, bad. again, you may not be able to repeat it as much. Some horses just cannot. So don't count the stride so much as, okay, we're going to make a little bit shorter of a walk. And right. we're going to walk half the arena at that. And exactly. And we're going to lengthen it out. Or, right. or it, for me, it might steps. be 10 steps shorter yeah. and then three minutes longer. Exactly. Yeah, okay. exactly. I, I, the shorter, you just have to be careful as you make it shorter that um, that's where you don't most overdo of the problems it. arise. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you don't overdo it. And, and again, that's not somewhat, something you want to yeah. do. And on rare occasions, and I have experienced this, um, when you ask the horse for a lot more than you realize you're asking mm-hmm. for, mm-hmm. you get something... I forget what it's called. It's one of the airs above the ground. I think it's the Capriole. Oh, yeah. Or you Labad. Get, you get that. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. a surprise. It's so, not folks good. out there, yeah. if your horse just seems to push his clutch in at the walk when you're mm-hmm. asking him to shorten his walk and the clutch goes in and doesn't come back out, yeah. change things fast. Yeah. Or yeah. grab hold of that next step. <laughs> Or we use the strap in front of the saddle, and we call it the yeah. seatbelt. Seat belt. The yeah. first time that ever happened thing. to me, the, yeah. the instructor didn't tell me that that could possibly happen. I yeah. had no clue because it was a horse that wouldn't do that kind of stuff. Yeah. But he really kind of figured out the engagement thing, <laughs> but he didn't figure out the move forward at the same time thing. Yeah. And he went straight up in the air with all four feet. That's not good. It was really exciting. <gasps> I was going, this is so cool. This is so cool. After that, I loved dressage. Yeah. <laughs> 
not we're not looking for that on a daily basis. Um, yeah, the horse but... the horse figured it out all in one moment though. It That's... was the weirdest thing is the light bulb came on because until then he had no idea how to engage any part of his body. That's awesome, actually. Yeah, he did it all at once, and from that point forward, whenever he got frustrated with me because <laughs> he my, did it <laughs> because my aids got too tight because yep. I'm a very tense rider. He would do it. He would yeah. go straight up with all four feet. He said, stop it. <laughs> and that was just his way of going, hello. Enough, enough. Yeah. So we have, to, as riders, have to be very cognizant that we are saying just as soft and correct as the, we're asking the horse to. Yeah. My, uh, my school horse, who's wonderful, her name is Sammy. Uh, Sammy will root. Uh, if you're too strong with her, she'll root back at you. So, so she says, don't do that. I don't like that. And yeah. And so it's always better to err on the side of, of light aids. Uh, well, you always want to start with light aids. Um, you know, if you go to a heavy aid, you need to reevaluate. Well, where do you go after that? Yeah, you have nowhere to go. You have nowhere to you go. You have nowhere to go. So Less is more. You have to be able to adapt. Um, you know, it's it, just like anything with human contact or, you know, animal mm-hmm. contact. You have to be able to quickly adapt the pressure that you use. And yeah. so I always want to start light. You can always add, but what you, you get to a certain point, you can't. There you go. Da-da-da-da. I hope that helps. We, Have co- a good time. we covered improving the walk in 18 minutes and 40 seconds. Congratulations. That's pretty good. <laughs> See you next time, folks. Bye. <laughs> I love Reese's tips. As a matter of fact, the tip on improving your horse's trot from episode 559, I was using those techniques today, made some good improvements. I was very pleased with myself. If you want to listen to more of Reese's tips, just go to horsetipdaily.com and go to the experts drop down menu on the left. You can also see what the whole gang is up to over at Maple Crest Farm. Go to maplecrestfarmky.com. And don't forget to support our sponsors here on Horse Tip Daily because they really do make these podcasts possible. Today's sponsor has been Equestrian Collections. Visit them today and look for the big red express blowout banner on the top of the page for amazing deals. Did a little bit of ordering, did a little damage today. Can't wait for the box to get here. Please stop by the Horse Tip Daily Facebook page and let us know what you think of the tips you hear on the show. It's also a great place to tell us about topics you'd like us to cover on the show. You can subscribe to all of the great shows on the Horse Radio Network through iTunes or Zune and get your horse podcasts automatically downloaded to your iPod, Zune, or MP3 player. I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, go ride your horse! The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily. Oh.